side, sends Roberts reeling backwards, has to back it back out. Morrison now has it. Webb guarding him. Watch Webb move side to side. Talk about wingspan. He certainly got plenty of it. Hammer, Hammer's been on the bench for a while now. He has. It has not. No points. Hasn't attempted a shot. His call goes inside. Struggles with that length. Rebound to Webb. Dyer hits the floor as Roberts gets it across. They're setting up with a minute five. Dixie doesn't look like they're in any major type of rush as they trail by one inside. Lemke got position on Anderson Foreman. Easy lay-in. Now you think about Lemke and, and his older brother Noah. He's been, you know, he's been having to guard his brother his whole <laughs> life. So that's easy money when you go inside like that. Anderson Foreman got it on the baseline. Lemke collapses, forces it to call. That pass from call goes off the backside of the hand of Roberts. It'll remain with the Warriors. And there he is, A.G. You mentioned it. Bowen Hammer was getting some bench time. He's back in. Still yet to attempt a shot, if I'm not mistaken. It's a 5-0 run right now for the Dixie Flyers as they've got the lead. And if you ask, well, why does Hammer need to shoot it? Well, 17 and a half points a game on the year, an above 50% three-point shooter, even despite taking above 70 triples. Those numbers don't lie. Warner with the ball. He'll swing it to Hammer. Hammer wants to look here. It's going to be swatted. He was looking for a bucket. Instead, Dyer knew exactly what was coming and got a hand on it. The screen wasn't good enough. Dyer was able to fight around the screen and get the block shot with his athleticism. Uh, that's how the Flyers overcome one of their star players is pure hustle. Clock winding down, 15 seconds. Assuming here, Flyers will hold for the last shot. Right in the game right now for Dixie. Out there working it with the guard lineup is Brecken Robinson. Ball stolen off Grant Carter. Will Warner's going to have a little bit of separation. Right hand laying up and in, and it's the Warriors who somehow get the last shot of the quarter, making it 9-10. Snow Canyon on top. We'll, we'll take a 30-second timeout and be right back with the second quarter. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable, whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard. Let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Welcome back to the hangar, Rustin Burnside, Andy Griffin. Yeah, baby. KDXU 92.5, the first half on ESPN 97.7. Until Dixie State basketball gets rolling and CEC TV helping us bring the action, you can catch all three Region 10 games on Utah Sports TV. And, man, the players aren't the only ones right now feeling the tension. The hangar is built in such a way that you feel like you're right on top of the action. And it has delivered so far. Play-by-play -play brought to you by our friends at Sports Clip. It's good to be a guy. Walk-ins always welcome. As Snow Canyon trailing. 10-9, to 9, they have the ball. Will Warner calls out the play, gives it to Hammer. Carter closes out on him. Warner thought about a three from the volleyball line. Instead drives inside, pump fakes Lemke. And I think Lemke in the air caused him to drag that foot a little bit. Travel. Yeah, that, you know, that's a controversial call in, in basketball because the referee has to be staring right at his foot to know whether he actually really did it. I guess the ref was looking at his foot, but that's not really where he's supposed to be looking anyway. I, I don't agree with it. I mean, if you travel, you travel, but you drag your foot an inch or something, come on. Tough one to tell. Either way, officials say Dixie with the ball. They're trying to regain the lead here in the second quarter. Roberts bumped. Anderson Foreman being very physical. Swinging it back to Grant Carter on the left side. Mackey picked him up. Flyers content to work it around. Dyer in the corner. Finally gets it to the big man in Lemke. Lemke squares up. Gives it back to Dyer. Dyer with a little hesitation. Dribble. Beautiful move <laughs> inside and lays it up with the right hand. Yeah, that, that, that late two for Snow Canyon was huge to start the quarter, but not maybe even as huge as that shot right there by, uh, by, by Dixie to take the lead back. And, there's a miss by Snow Canyon. That was Morrison, his second miss of the night. He's kind of been struggling a little bit beyond the arc. Is Lemke inside? Uh, Warner collapsed. Anderson Foreman was there. Lemke's just too big. Meacham is mad at his players. He's like, look, if you're going to front a guy, there's got to be a guy behind the big guy too. When you dump that thing inside, it should be two guys on the big man. The backside guy wasn't there. It was an easy layup. It's only a 30 seconds, so we'll keep it right here on KDXU 92.5 CEC TV. 
And you're absolutely right. Lemke, looking at his statistics so far, he's up to five points. Dyer with five points. And Carter with three. Snow Canyon on the other end. Anderson Foreman had an offensive rebound put back, as well as Owen Mackey, six points on his own. He's kind of been the go-to guy for Snow Canyon. But they're still trying to implement some of their studs in bow and hammer. Lyman Simmons, story of the game so far, foul trouble. He's been riding the pine a lot longer than he's wanted to. That's back-to-back -back games where Snow Canyon star has been hurt by a couple early fouls. Coach Meacham calls out to Cy Meacham. His first minute's on the floor over to Owen Mackey. Yeah, I got both the coach's sons out playing today. Yes, we do. Roberts and Meacham both as we have a steal from Roberts. He kicks it ahead to Robinson. He's blocked by Mackey. Ball ends up in the hands of Meacham as he tried to kick it forward. Yeah. Travel. And Dad, Doug Meacham is over there again. My guy, my son, is on the floor because somebody pushed him. Come on, make a call official. But it's a good call. So it'll remain with the Flyers. Roberts off the inbound, curls around. Thought about Lemke, instead decides to pull. Wanted a foul, instead gets the jump shot. Yeah, he totally got hit on the arm just as he let go. I don't know how it got in because he did get fouled. Couple crazy jumpers so far. Oh, Mackey hit one for Snow Canyon. Roberts with a tough pull up there. Morrison six, has it. Six nothing, by the way, in this quarter for Dixie. Yeah, big, big run for the Flyers. That's a good point right there. It's been all Dixie up to this moment. Hammer trying to change that. Contested three. And when I say contested, that was solid defense from Brecken Robbins. He got right underneath Hammer to a point where Hammer almost even had a tough time landing. Someone might say, Oh, that's a foul. That's not legal, yeah. It's, it's not, he just got right in the right spot. Robinson using his size to his advantage there to contest that three. I will say this. Hammer usually doesn't let that bother him anyway. He usually yeah. he makes those. I mean, we're talking a guy that, about a guy that hits more than half of his threes. And he's attempted over 70 this year. He's closer to 80 than he is 70. So impressive statistics. But Dixie really turning it on here in the second. Webb up to Grant Carter. He waits for the call from Coach Roberts, and now he gets the offense moving. Webb spins to Dyer. Dyer already had a couple nice buckets. He has a three. Got inside. He's up to five total. Carter picked up by Mackey. Left-hand dribble. He's going to penetrate inside. Mackey got a piece of that. That ball careens off the backboard. It comes back into the hands of Carter. Oh. And Carter leaning lefty lay-in. Phenomenal shot over the defense. Left-handed rattles home. And the lead, it's an 8-0 run right now. The lead is 17-10. to I don't know how he got that lane. Well, first of all, good hustle to get your board. Simmons left alone, lost the ball as Dyer closed in. He's back on the floor, and Roberts now controls for Dixie. Swings it over to Carter. Carter thought about Lemke in the post. Simmons now on him. Flyers continue to work it around. Dyer, he's going to stop off a left-hand uh -oh. dribble. Pull up and hits, and he is filling it. Cam Dyer. Going to be a full timeout on the floor as Coach Meacham comes out and says, all right, 10-0 run. We need to stop momentum, and we need to stop it now. This was one of our Camping World keys of the game. So Canyon had to get out to a good start. Now the crowd's into it. The lead is nine, and we got a timeout. We'll take it with them. 45 seconds, we'll be back as Dixie leads 19-10. Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder. Space to connect. Space to imagine. Space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. Nineteen ten is the score. It's the Flyers. And when I say it's the Flyers, it's been all Dixie here in the second quarter with four minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Yeah, three-minute, ten-to-nothing run right now for the Dixie Flyers. Snow Canyon needs a basket in the worst way. Warner trying to snap Snow Canyon out of their funk. They've gone scoreless the entire second. Simmons with a big hand of Webb in his face, dribbles around the top for a little bit, has to give it to Mackey. Mackey, Dyer tried to contest it, instead ends up hitting him on the arm, and Owen Mackey should be going to the fabulous Freddy's free throw line. Well, he actually passed the ball, and you could say, well, was he passing before he got fouled? 
I think he was, and, and I don't think they're going to give him free throws. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be side out. Good call there. Mackey stood at the free throw line like he was ready to shoot, but that's what any player does, right? That's right. Everyone tries to trick the official into giving him the free throws. Instead, Dyer with his first. Into the corner off the inbound was Mackey. Gives it to Hammer. Hammer works it inside. Simmons yet to get going. Little right. Hey, oh. <laughs> I mean, Dyer flew high for that, but that was a clear goaltend. Yeah, great block on the hook shot. Problem is the ball was about almost in the hoop when he got there. That's a goaltending. And the first basket in uh, about four and a half minutes comes by the goaltend. And the first basket for Snow Canyon star Lyman Simmons. Makes it 19-12. The officials come over to Coach Roberts. I think we got a spill or something in the corner of the A little moisture floor. over there. Uh, something right right near the X on the baseline where it says Dixie Flyers. And I, I, I don't know if Dyer knew that ball was on the way down or if he just wanted to show off his rare athleticism, whatever the case may be. Well, that, that, <laughs> that was going in. It, it yeah. was definitely going in. So really no harm on that one. In fact, maybe it's something – Snow Canyon thinks about later yeah. in the game. Yeah, oh, that's something Dyer's I would think around. about. Yeah. That guy well above the rim on that play. Roberts swinging over to Dyer. Snow Canyon finally snapped that streak. Now they got to get it done on the defensive end. Over in the corner, Carter inside to Lemke off the roll. Lemke bumps into a couple bodies as a couple players meet together. Officials will intervene. No, everybody's good. It was just Lemke, who's a sophomore, just to kind of trying to get to the free throw line, and he tried to walk through a Snow Canyon player. It's all good, but he definitely got fouled on the entry pass. Here's Webb off the inbound, big man to big man, Oops, inside to Lemke. Lemke took a couple steps. That's what Coach Meacham wants. He wants a double dribble. Webb for three. That one looked good. Is no good. Mackey has it. Snow Canyon trying to go on a small mini run of their own. It's Mackey. Coming off an Anderson Foreman screen. Over to Simmons. Simmons trying to go baseline, and they're going to say he's bumped and foul. Yeah, that's a hold by Lemke. Now, you know, we're making a big deal, or I'm making a big deal, Lemke being a sophomore. But remember, Lyman Simmons is only a junior. He's been playing yeah. varsity since he was a freshman, but he's only a junior. It's not like he's, you know, been around and he's, he's, he's 27 years old or something. Dyer, he's been playing so many varsity minutes, it feels like he's been around forever. As Dyer yeah. steals the inbound tip pass, calls for it on the offensive end. He's definitely one of the energizers on this Flyer team. Dyer goes to the corner, gets the ball back, took a step back, instead swings it over to Webb. Webb to Roberts, back to Dyer. He tries to break down Anderson Foreman. Picks up the ball, and he was going to be put in a tough spot. doesn't matter, though, as Caleb Anderson Foreman picks up his foul. Yeah, he was going to end up shooting about an 18-foot runner, and that, that's not a good shot, but got bailed out by the foul. I love the energy that Dyer's bringing to this game, Russ, and because, uh, you know, I, I think Dixie needed a spark plug. Dyer's not a starter. He came off the bench, but he's really just kind of energizing this team. Flyers have always been a team that's relied not on one or two guys, but really the team as a whole. Showing it right now, 19-12 on the We Win Injury Law scoreboard. Lemke up top. Gives it back to Webb. Big men kind of work around the perimeters. Roberts goes inside. He's going to run into Anderson Foreman. Official says that's an offensive foul as Roberts continued his forward momentum. Yeah, good take by Anderson Foreman just standing there. Uh, he tried, you, you know, that's one of those teardrops you pull up and hit a little runner. Problem is, after he let go of the ball, he kept going forward instead of stopping, and that's where the contact came, and it was an easy call for the official. Warner dribbles with the left hand, takes things slowly, three minutes, eight seconds on the clock. Back to Owen Mackey. The Warriors find themselves down 19-12. Simmons with the ball inside. Lemke was there. Webb was there. Loses the ball. Lemke has it. And now here's Dyer on the other end. No one saw him coming that way. He went up on the left side, finished on the right. Reverse lay-in. Still a nine-point edge. Good move because the big guy Simmons was there. Dyer with six points here in the second quarter alone. Simmons keeps Webb there with his right hand at bay. Ends up kicking it back out to Warner. Warner hesitates off the screen. Corner, Lyman Simmons open, look for three. Team D auto three right down the barrel. Yeah, he's got range. That's something he added to his game last year a little bit and a lot more this year. I think that's his 12th on the season. You're absolutely right on that. He was a 33% three-point shooter coming into this one. As Carter tries to get inside Simmons yeah. with a massive block. That's a get forward block courtesy of Lyman Simmons. Don't bring down weak stuff in here, Lyman says. And that's going to lead to a great look from Bowen Hammer. It's in and out. Ball fought for Owen Mackey saves it. It's going to give Will Warner a look at three. That one too strong off the back iron. And Carter controls. Ty Roberts says, you know what, we need a break. 30-second timeout. 
will take it with him. 30-second timeout. Be back. It's 21-15. Dixie on top. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Twenty-one fifteen is the cheer as is the score as Dixie and Snow Canyon's cheers echo across the hangar. The Warriors fan base, man, they they travel well, and I'm talking about their students. They were out in full force against Desert Hills. They're out in full force here tonight. Dixie with the ball, Bronson Barbin back in after taking a pretty good sized rest. Makes it Lemke and Barbin in the front court. Is up top. Carter tough pass as he tried to find Roberts. It sells out of bounds. Snow do, Canyon ball. Do have one Hearst Ace Hardware update midway through the second quarter. Crimson Cliffs 21, Pineview 11. Mustangs on top protecting their home floor. Panthers 6 and 5 on the year. Crimson Cliffs, eight wins so far. The Snow Canyon works it around up top. Warner over to Anderson Foreman. Call wanted it inside, had position on Lemke, didn't get it. Mackey back out to Call who pops up above the, above the three point line. Warner. Simmons back out, by the way, taking a break. No line Probably maybe with those two fouls, don't want him to get the third before halftime. Yeah, with a minute 13 left, that very well could be the case. As Hammer works off an Anderson Foreman screen, took it right at Lemke. First one didn't go, got his own rebound. Second one won't go, and Hammer tries to get in to create a tied-up ball with Bronson Barbin, but instead he gets a foul call. Frustration abounding for number five, Bowen Hammer. You know, he should have hit that shot. Maybe not the first one. That was a tough shot. But that second one, the putback, he just didn't put enough English on it off the glass. And then when he missed it, he's like, ah, oh, I got to get that ball back. And as what happens a lot of times, you miss a shot, you go right through the guy to get it, and that's a foul. Bowen Hammer's not a small guard. Credit to Kyle Lemke for staying straight up on that contest. Barbin now with it for the Flyers. Under a minute here to go in the second quarter. Barbin attacks. Ends up swinging it into the right corner to Robbins. He gets it to Carter. Carter splits the defense. Swings to Lemke on the drive. Out to Barbin. Good look at three. That one no good. Zach Call thought he had the rebound. Instead, Lemke comes up with it. Then Lemke loses it. Warner now has it for the Warriors. 37 seconds left and ticking right now for Snow Canyon. Mackey picks it up. Warriors yeah. may hold for the last shot here. Yeah, they'll play for one. By the way, Lemke thought he got fouled on that, the, that, uh, that reach in, but he actually fouled a guy first. He's lucky he didn't get called for one himself. Definitely been a physical contest up to this point. Defensive minded to the extreme. 21-15, home team on top, but Warriors should get the last shot. Clock down to 13, 12, 11. It's Mackey, man on man against Grant Carter. He's gonna go to the left, he'll stop, pop, pulls up for three, off the back iron, call with an offensive rebound. It's gonna give Snow Canyon another look. Bowen Hammer at the buzzer. Got it to go, makes it a three point game before half. Bowen Hammer's first points. Well, that wasn't smooth, it didn't swish, it wasn't pretty. And Hammer, after he hit the shot, didn't didn't celebrate, raise his arm, put the, the three out there with the circle zero. No, he just had a look of relief on his face, like, finally, I got something to go. A big shot for the Warriors. They needed it because that second quarter was Dixie's for a long time. But the Warriors close strong, 21-18. We'll take a two-minute timeout and be back with our halftime show brought to you by our good friends at InfoWest. We'll get you some highlights as well as Hersey's Hardware Region 10 updates and some Wilkinson statistics. Two minute timeout, we'll be back. It's Dixie 21, Snow Canyon 18. Dear Chairlift, let's try this my way. With available four wheel drive that takes me straight to the top in style and a wild side that's always ready for whatever's next. Still want to take the scenic route? Sure thing. Keep it wild, Forerunner. Toyota, let's go places.
Hey, Marcus, you guys got a highlight uh, package for us? Text me if you do or something. It's the InfoWest Halftime Show. And when we talk about InfoWest, we're talking about the fastest internet in Southern Utah. I know AG uses them and loves them. And uh, that's that's how you get in your gamer mode, right? InfoWest helps you out in a big way there as you're torching losers in Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no buffering, no delay. I love InfoWest. Go to InfoWest.com to find out more. And for our InfoWest Halftime Show, we're going to be bringing you some Wilkinson statistics, Region 10, Hearst Ace Hardware, Region 10 updates, and uh, as we have action going on all throughout the night, Cedar, the only team not gearing up and going this Wednesday. But here at the hangar, what a close by Snow Canyon. It seemed like it was going to be all flyers. They get raced out to a pretty big lead. It was uh, got the 21, and then Snow Canyon held them in check. And a buzzer beater by Bowen Hammer from beyond the arc made it 21-18, Dixie on top. What are your big takeaways so far? This game's delivered everything we've wanted up to this point, right? Well, you know, without Hammer scoring most of the half, I think Snow Canyon was, was struggling. We had a stretch there where Owen Mackey got hot, made some buckets. Lyman Simmons has been pretty quiet with the foul troubles. So you really need Hammer, like we saw against Snow, uh, Desert Hills, to hit some big shots. He didn't do that, and so that's when the lead ballooned to 19-10. to 10. It was 21-12. to 12. Now, fortunately for Snow Canyon, they were able to finish strong, get the last six points, including that three by Hammer. But I guarantee you, Snow Canyon will not win this game if Bowen Hammer doesn't finish with more than three points. I promise you. I'd say you're spot on there. They're going to need everything they can tonight because although the Flyers have been without Risco Brooks, you wouldn't know it. This is a team that's played very cohesively together. And despite a rough couple last minutes to end the half, Flyers find themselves with a three-point lead. As we look at our Wilkinson statistics, lighted up Region 10 since 1946. Wilkinson's House of Lighting has been a fan of all Southern Utah sports. Lights, fans, fixtures, whatever you need in that category, contractor, homeowner, doesn't matter. You're always welcome at Wilkinson's. And when we break things down, starting with Snow Canyon, we saw in the first quarter it was all Owen Mackey. He was the one getting them going. Eight points in the first quarter alone on his way to ten. Caleb Anderson Foreman had an offensive rebound that laid to a lay and also took a pretty big charge. In the second, we saw a lot more Lyman Simmons as Simmons ended up uh, with a couple inside, two points inside, and then hit a Team D triple as well on his way to five. And Bowen Hammer, his first shot of the night was a big one at the buzzer as he knocked down a three right before half to cut it to three. Um, and so as far as for Snow Canyon, there really hasn't been one player. Mackey with his Mackey with his eight has been nice. Simmons with his five uh, and Bowen Hammer with his three. I think we expect a little bit more from Snow Canyon's big three in the second half because they're that hard to contain. Yeah, and it, you know, Dixie has done a good job. You talked about it in pregame, one of the keys of the game is so many different guys can step up for Dixie. And, and we'll talk about their scoring in just a minute. Snow Canyon hasn't had that luxury in this game. And yeah. fortunately, like I said, they made that late run or they'd be out of this game. But, um, you know, if it wasn't Mackey, his heroics in the first quarter and a couple of late buckets, Snow Canyon would be in big trouble. So, again, Hammer's got to show up in the second half. Uh, Lyman Simmons, let's be honest, he, he sat a lot because of foul trouble. Yeah. But they got to have his scoring inside. It doesn't matter that six foot eleven Kean Webb is on his back or uh, uh, Kyle Lemke is with him. 
He's got to score. They need it. They absolutely do as the Warriors find themselves trailing by three on the road, trying to stay undefeated on the year. Came in 14-0, the Flyers 11-2. And, and for the hometown team, uh, right now for Dixie, it's been a very balanced effort in the first quarter alone. Cam Dyer hit a three off the bench. Uh, Kyle Lemke with three points of his own, and Grant Carter with three for a nine-point first quarter. And if you think that's a, a little lacking, well, that's been the whole game. It's been very defensive-minded with the bigs and the athleticism that both these teams possess. In the second, though, things got going a little bit. Roberts poured in two. Cam Dyer had six points in the second, making his total on the ball game nine right now. He only averages about eight a game. He's well above that at the moment for Cam Dyer. Lemke had another lay-in to go to five on the night, and Grant Carter had a nice little lefty laying on off the offensive rebound to put his total to five. Carter with five, Lemke with five, Dyer with nine, and Roberts with two. Uh, if you're Dixie right now, do you really want anybody else to, to add their name to the equation, or are you okay kind of right now with Cam Dyer really being the one who leads the way off the bench? I mean, I'm expecting more scoring from some of these guys, particularly like Barbin, Grant Carter, who he got his buckets in the first half, but we know that he's much more capable. Well, you know, we talked about it in pregame. One of the keys of the game was who, who's the next man up? Who's going to step up, uh, Rustin, with Brooks out? And, and to, in my mind, you know, I mean, we talked about, okay, they started Roberts, whatever. Who? It's it's really dire, the guy that has stepped up. Yeah, he's in, been big. And, and he averages eight a game, okay? It's not like he's a nobody. But he's the guy that said, look, my, my, my partner, my teammate is down. They need my help. They need my energy. They need my leadership. And most of all, they need my scoring in this game. And he stepped up and gotten it done. I, I've been so impressed with the way Dyer has played this first half. I have too. His athleticism has shown through. His ability to hit from deep has shown. And he has been very aggressive when it comes to getting to the cup, attacking the rim, and finishing in a big way. Those are your Wilkinson statistics. You're listening to the Info West Halftime Show. We're going to take another two-minute timeout and be back with some Purse Ace Hardware Region 10 updates here at Dixie High. Flyers on top, 21-18. Dear Chairlift, let's try this my way. With available four-wheel drive, it takes me straight to the top in style and a wild side that's always ready for whatever's next. Still want to take the scenic route? Sure thing. Keep it wild. Forerunner. Toyota. Let's go places. It is your ideal home and paint game of the week on KDXU 92.5. That's right, 
Don't plan on 94.9 anymore. 92.5 is the way to go yes. for a more clear stream with even more reach than ever before. We're yeah, excited better, about that. Better signal. Uh, you know, and, and it's a brand new signal. I was talking with the engineer. He says this nobody's ever been on 92.5 before. And he said, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy. I don't like change. I'm like, yeah. I'm kind of <laughs> resistant to this. KDXU is my baby. He, the engineer came to me and he said, this should make listeners happy and should make you happy. The marriage 890 and 925 is an eternal marriage. It's forever. 929 or 890 and 925 will be together for the rest of time. I don't know that I believe that, but he's guaranteed we'll never be separated again. So tune in to 92.5. Change one of the buttons on your car. Listen in. Of course, you can always catch us online on Alexa. You can go to the app 890 KDXU app and pick that up. You can stream on the website 890kdxu.com. And of course, we're here on CEC TV too. So uh, there are all kinds of places you can access us. Yeah, there, there, there is no shortage of Region 10 athletics whatsoever because based on KDXU, ESPN 97.7, who's currently playing Dixie State basketball, we try to bring you all the local sports that we can. And with such a great community, they deserve great access to local high school and college athletics. And uh, speaking of the other teams and speaking of change, Region 10 standings trying to change themselves up a little bit. Let's jump into our Hearst Ace Hardware updates. And we want to thank our good friends at Hearst Ace Hardware. Check out all the hot buys every month at Hearst General Store, located in the heart of St. George and Cedar. Open seven days a week to serve you with a variety of products and prices that please. I was trying to tell you uh, earlier, I don't know if you believe me, you're kind of looking at me like I'm crazy. Don't sleep on these Crimson Cliffs and Mustangs. Right now they lead by a dozen over Pineview at halftime. If they win, they'll go to 3-0 and in region play. They're the team that's going to make some noise down the stretch. I don't know if they're there yet with Dixie and Snow Canyon, but they're close, and they're going to win yeah. tonight. They're up by a dozen. So it's 28-16 Crimson over Pineview at the half, and it's late second quarter, Desert Hills and Hurricane. It's the Tigers on the road with a 10-point lead, 25-15. to yeah, Hurricane got off to a hot preseason start. They've kind of hit a, uh, a rut in the road once region play began, trying to get their first region victory, or sorry, their second region victory of the year. I do believe they have a win over Pineview, if I'm not mistaken. As uh, we get closer and closer to the second half, clock shows 54 seconds. Dixie meets back over with Coach Roberts on the sideline. Snow Canyon still getting some shots up in this three-point game. We've been treated to it all. You want big blocks? We've had big blocks. You want threes? We've got threes. You want fancy moves inside with great finishes? We've had plenty of those. The athleticism, the talent, and the hustle has been on full display tonight. What are you looking forward to here in the second half, AG? Well, before we get to that, a couple other scores. Utah State. Oh, yeah playing at Colorado State. Colorado State ranked 11-1 and one on the year. Good basketball team. That game is at with four minutes left. It's Colorado State. Let's see. No, the Aggies up 64-63. to 63. Back and forth they go. That should be a good finish. And then the Utah Jazz are down a half dozen. They don't have Rudy Gobert. They don't have Rudy Gay. They don't have Elijah Hughes. I think Joe Ingles is back, but they started Royce O'Neal, who is 6'5 at center tonight yeah. for the Utah Jazz and they're understandably losing. It's not over, though. They're only down, uh, I don't think it's seven points right well, now. And, and there is no true traditional center on that roster tonight. No Gobert, no Whiteside, no Azabuki, and no Norvell Pell, the guy who probably wouldn't be in the NBA if it wasn't for these COVID contracts. Even he himself is out. So they're having to play small, small ball against the biggest team in the NBA, the Cleveland yeah. Cavaliers. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a Derek Favors right now, huh? Uh, <laughs> or Greg, Mark Greg Oster tag, definitely a Mark Eaton. I, don't know I mean, we, we'd settle for a Carrillo Facinco at this point. <laughs> Dixie will have the ball to begin the second and the lead. 21-18, third quarter action. It's Roberts, little floater inside, rolled forward, bounced off the rim and dropped. That's a nice runner because Lemke was there waiting for him. He takes one more step, Lemke swats that into the student section. Tough finish in Snow Canyon now on the other end. Looking for their big man. Simmons tried to get inside to Mackey. was the right idea. Pass was too long. Mackey's saying, look, I got held. How come you didn't see him held, holding me? And the referee says, you didn't get held. Just play ball. <laughs> and normally what the referee says ends up going as he's, much he's, as you protest it. He's the guy with the whistle. Here's Carter. Swings it over to Webb. Flyers did a good job of working that offense in the first half, looking for the most ideal shot. Not everyone fell, but they were all pretty clean looks for a good majority. 
Roberts has that go off his right hand. Nice little flick over to Barbin. Barbin feeds the big man in Webb. Webb looking for his first points. He's going to try to bully Hammer, and Hammer had that hand come down on Webb. That's going to be Bowen Hammer's first. Oh, if Hammer knew, Lim uh, Lyman Simmons was coming to help out. Yeah. He did not need to foul him there because Simmons was going to swat that one away, but he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. That was an easy call for the official. Webb does a good job of taking initiative. He hasn't put up a shot tonight. It's not as if he's scoreless because he's missed a handful of shots. That was his first attempt, really. He's a, he's a player who recognizes the matchup, takes advantage of it, knew that he could take Hammer to the weight room. Is the first fabulous Freddy's free throw up and through. Make it two for two for Big Key and Webb. By the way, Joe Ingles just got ejected from the Jazz game. Oh, so good. as if they weren't shorthanded enough, there goes another one. Yeah, uh, Joe coming off an absence there for Utah as he was in health and safety protocols. They need all hands on deck tonight, and uh, there's one guy down. Speaking of one guy down, Flyers without their star player, Brooks, and they've done a just great job so far, 25-18. They've started this half on a small 4-0 run. Yep, seven-point lead, and again, Stoke Canyon has got to get that thing under control. And they're not going to do that as it goes off the hands of Anderson Foreman. Dixie has it. It was Webb to Barbin, Barbin to Carter, and he'll set it back to Roberts. Roberts tried to swing it inside, pass too short for Lemke, and now Hammer has it on the other end for Snow Canyon. He stops, pops, and gets it to go. Too much separation for Snow Canyon sniper. Is there a better shooter in the state of Utah right now? I don't think so. I would say no, Sp specifically from a percentage point. There's no denying it. Off the hammer three, Dixie tries to answer. Barbin tried to work inside, ended up losing the ball, picks it back up, gives it out to Roberts. Roberts back to Barbin. Barbin yet to score. Dribbles with the left hand to Webb. Webb continues it moving over to Roberts. Roberts thought about penetrating and said steps back to Lemke. Those big guys like to pop up to swing it to one other end as Webb pops up and gives it back to Carter. Carter thought about using Webb's screen. Instead goes the other direction, and he's blocked by Simmons off the backboard. This time Simmons was waiting for it. Good block from Lyman Simmons. Blocks this year brought to you by Get Floored Construction. Go check out Get Floored. Homes for sale or specializes in remodeling your existing home. At three, no good. Web controls. Yeah, I think it was just inside the, the uh, arc there. Simmons, not a good shot. as That was hard off the iron, an easy rebound. Yeah, points have been definitely a little harder for Simmons to come by down in the paint. It doesn't help that he had foul trouble earlier on, wasn't able to get the same amount of looks he generally does. Dixie feeds the big man inside. Lemke is trying to go to work on Simmons. Instead gets Carter, who Mackey lost. Mackey turned around. Carter blew to the rim, and it results in a left-handed lay-in for Grant Carter. Beautiful dish by the big guy, Lemke. Left-handed pass and then a left-handed shot. They're going to go to their big guy, Lyman Simmons, rises up off the pass from Mackey. And no, he didn't throw it down, but he might as well have. Great finish. It was finish. pretty close to a dunk. And, and uh, old Bronson Barber's over there saying, uh, he's, he's really tall. <laughs> I, I mean, I can't do what he just did. And the ability not only to gather and go up like that when you're all by yourself, I mean, that's one thing. But when you have two flyers underneath you and you're able to put it in, Great job from Lyman Simmons. He finds himself back at the charity stripe, gets the free throw up and in. And the Warriors have quietly crept within three once again. Dixie with the ball, Webb to Carter. Warner picks him up over to Lemke in the corner. He gives it back to Carter. One thing about the Dixie guards is they never stop moving. Roberts now with it, crossover inside, beautiful pass to Lemke. Lemke with the reverse, he'll put one down. Ah, he goes front side, that is blocked by Simmons, but instead he says, you know what, I'm just a sophomore, but I could go weak side too. He went to the other side for the layup. Good recognition there, like you mentioned, to go the right way and be able to finish that. Gave himself a chance and converted, 29-24. Dixie on top, Will Warner has it, he's being guarded by Roberts. Goes inside with the left hand, gives it to Hammer. Barbin chasing Hammer on his hip. Hammer stops, pops, rolled around for a second. Won't take a Warriors bounce, and the Flyers have it. Great rebound by Lemke. Roberts gets Warner on his backside as he gets into the painted area. Gives it to Carter. Carter winds up for three. That one off the left side. Barbin and Anderson Foreman there both for the rebound. I don't know if anyone had true possession of that. They both almost just wrapped it up at the same time. I like the call, though, because to me, they both got there at the same time. Yeah, you know, I was afraid he was going to call a foul on one of them. I'm like, that's not a foul. That's simultaneous possession or simultaneous almost possession. 
It should be a movie, a, a little, you know, like Psycho <laughs> or something. That sounds like position. a movie title. Yeah. That'd be. I, I mean, I'd check it out. Yep. Bowen Hammer to Lyman Simmons, fakes a three, trying to get the drop on Webb, goes inside, draws contact, count the bucket, finishing through it. Let me compliment official on this one. When he drove on that one and slammed on the brakes, his right foot slid, but his pivot foot, his left foot, did not slide. Referee, instead of being fooled and calling a travel, let him play on. And I think it's actually a good no call on the travel. I think his pivot foot stayed where it was. Unfortunately, our replay, by the way, we're not working tonight, so I can't prove it or be disproved either way. I, I'd, say, uh, <laughs> I'd say we'll let it play for sure. No going back now. And even if we did have a replay, no going back now. Lyman Simmons at the stripe. He's starting to make himself comfortable there. He's a great free throw shooter this year. And as I say that, <laughs> that careens That's off the fault. iron. That's your That's fault. That's my bad. Snow Canyon fans, you can uh, send me mail on that one. I apologize. Carter has it. He's picked up by Owen Mackey. Mackey had a massive first quarter. He's been quiet ever since. Grant Carter with the ball, gives it over to Roberts. Roberts right hand dribble inside. He's going to be double teamed by Warner and Simmons, and it looks like Warner reached over the top and will be called. A yeah, little out of control on the drive there. He slammed on the brakes, tried to turn back around, and got bailed out by a foul. He was trapped, though. Will Warner, his second on the night. Roberts inbounds right at the word Flyers. Dyer back in the game. Electric first half. Oh. Keep it rolling, Cam Dyer. Can you say Brian Russell being pushed off by Michael Jordan in the jump shot? That's exactly what that looked like. <laughs> it was smooth as can be. And here in Utah, we say that's a push off, but anywhere else, yeah. that's a great basketball move. Hammer inside to Mackey. Great off ball cut from Mackey. Give and go, the old give and go work to perfection. Good finish for Snow Canyon there. They needed that. 31-28, three-point game. And uh, we're still at the same deficit we were at half with two minutes, 30 seconds here in the third. Setting up for a great finish. Lemke trying to work inside out to Carter. Carter slips his man. Corner, Roberts had a look at three. Instead, he's going to drive inside amongst the trees, and he swatted away. Get floor blocked by Warner. It ends up in the hands of Carter, who tried to shovel it to Lemke. Instead, they're saying he traveled. Well, that's a tough call for, for Carter because... Somebody got a hand on the ball, and that's not a travel when the defender hits the ball from you, but the referee was shielded by his body, didn't see that the ball was touched. It, it, it did. It, it looked like that, especially from where we're sitting. But like you said, tough The referee was on the angle. other side. Yep. yep. Warner, left-hand dribble, goes to right. Looks for Hammer to pop out. Hammer being guarded aggressively by Dyer. Inside to Simmons. Simmons, beautiful spin over Webb. Gets it to go off the backboard. And this is as close as they've been since early in the second quarter. Lemke on the other end, got it inside, draws the foul, and it stares down Walker Morrison. As Morrison trots back to his bench to talk to Coach Meacham. For Walker, yeah. that's his first personal. Morrison's kind of going, hey, I, I didn't foul him. I, I, I didn't. You know what, though? I played basketball for 50 years. I never committed a foul in my life. It doesn't happen. Nope. Ask any defender. They do not foul. And uh, Lemke does not hit his first free throw. He's going to get a lot over the course of the next three years. And like, like Simmons, who wasn't a great free throw shooter when he started, he needs to become one because he's going to go to that line a lot. This year alone, Lemke from the charity stripe, he's a 52% free throw shooter. Yep, got to fix that, his, big fella. You're going to get there a lot. And his free throw percentage has probably dipped a tiny bit this ballgame. Has made one, but he's left a couple out there. The second one, it's a... It's a it's a solid release, but he gets very low into that shot, and he knocks the second one home. Yeah, 50%. Mackey for Snow Canyon, controls with the left hand, being guarded by Carter. He gives it to Hammer. Hammer with a little side fake back to Mackey. Mackey pulls it out with the left hand, gives it to Hammer, who's going to try to get a screen. He's blocked by Dyer. He decided to pull up off the screen attempt and gets that ball sent back down to earth. That's a shot he usually gets off over less athletic players, but Dyer, he's an athlete. He is an athlete. He can rise high. We already seen him with a uh, goaltend. As Roberts is tripped up, the officials will huddle. I didn't see a foul call, and there is no foul. Out of bounds, Snow Canyon basketball. Warriors with a chance now. 120 to go in the third to tie or take the lead on this possession. Don't look now, but Lyman Simmons, a seven-point third quarter up to this point with a minute 15. 
It's the Flyers 32, Snow Canyon 30. Mackey drives quickly off the pass and gets to the rim uncontested. So quick. When he got that ball, he took off. It was like somebody shot him out of a gun, and he ties this game. He knew exactly where he was going when he got that ball. Meacham runs into a Lemke screen. He's able to get back to Roberts. Carter has it in front of Mackey. Swinging around up top with the right hand dribble. Gives it back to Roberts. Meacham trying to reach in there, 48 seconds. Neither team really in any foul situation. They're going to milk it. I think they're going to try to take a last shot here. As Roberts swings Maybe baseline not. to Lemke. Thought about the baseline jumper. Dyer, he'll take one from the corner. That one no good. Lemke bats that ball to Webb, who tried to throw it inside to a cutting Carter. Instead, Simmons has it. Snow Canyon pushing forward with Walker Morrison. Morrison bumped by Grant Carter. We said neither team really in foul trouble. That's going to be Dixie's third personal of the quarter, yeah, or we, of this half. We'll get to the bonus in the fourth quarter on yeah, both sides, but, but right <laughs> now, three each, 26 seconds left. And believe it or not, the Warriors, if they can score in this last possession, could have the lead at the end of this uh, third quarter. Be big for Snow Canyon. They have not trailed by much throughout the night. Nine, but it's been nine I think, was the biggest lead. Yeah, I, I believe you're right. But it's been a struggle to score the ball, and nine points in a game like this can feel like forever. So the Warriors have battled back 18 seconds, 17 seconds, and we're going the – well, what we got here, A.G.? I didn't see that. I was looking at the ball handler. I think they're going to call Carter pushing inside on Mackey. Ooh, two quick fouls for Dixie and for Grant Carter. And he's about – he, he gives about five inches up, maybe six to Mackey. So that's, t that's a tough ask. 17 seconds, inbound goes to Simmons. He's quickly double teamed. He'll have to give it back to Meacham. Time to go, though, no, 12 seconds. Down to 10. Clock continues to tick. Warriors down by two in the third. They want the last shot. It's Mackey. He's going to be double teamed. Swings it back. Morrison pump fake. Step back. Triple. No good. And we got another foul. This one, I think, is going to uh -oh. go against Lyman Simmons. And, and that's going to be his third uh, with a half a oh. second to go in a quarter. That, that is that's a deal. You know, you don't want to commit a foul right then. That's a that's a bad deal. Simmons is gonna have to worry about fouls the rest of the way now. Fouls are now four apiece, and Lyman Simmons with point five in the third will head to the Snow Canyon bench. Webb, he's gonna go way deep, overthrows Dyer. Now the ball will go all the way back to the baseline under the Snow Canyon basket because nobody touched it. Actually, that's what the official's gonna ask. Did he touch it? And I, I don't know if he did. I mean Dyer's got hops, but I, I don't think, think that, he I think it. that pass was a little too high. If that's the case, you got time for maybe something real quick under yeah, the Yeah, yeah, a little tip in, half the, a second. Never mind, take that half a second Well, away. they're going to say he touched it, and in touching it, that made the half a second go away, and that's the end of the quarter. And that'll do it for the third, 32-32. We are all tied up here at Dixie High. You're not going to want to miss the fourth. One minute timeout, we'll be right back. Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder, space to connect, space to imagine, space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. Back at the hangar for the fourth quarter. The We Win Injury Law scoreboard reads 32-32. And uh, if we were the Utah Jazz right now, we'd be saying it's buckle up time and what has been a fantastic game. Well, think about this. The average height of Dixie tonight is higher, is bigger than the average height of the Utah Jazz tonight. <laughs> That's <laughs> not even I, I don't even think, yeah, you're not lying there as Lemke swings it back to Roberts. Set a screen for a moment. Lemke on the roll. Zach Call. Having to play a little bit more due to Lyman Simmons foul trouble. Does a good job of stopping Lemke. Dyer tries to get inside. Beautiful find from Dyer and Barbin blew the way in. Oh, you had the bunny, the puppy, the easy money for the lead. Good pass though by Dyer. Oh, what a great find from Dyer who, he's been electric all night long. That time uses his athleticism to cut baseline. Barbin just can't finish. Mackey and Anderson Foreman playing a little bit of back and forth. Meacham finally ends up with it, picked up by Roberts. Two coaches' sons going at it. No hammer, no Simmons in the game right now for SC. 
Beautiful find, Anderson Foreman to a cutting Zach Call. Call rises high and gets the right hand lay in over Lemke. That's a great finish because it was not easy. There was defense there. As Roberts contains, crosses over right to left. Barbin with it. Barbin still looking for his first points of the night. Roberts trying to work on Meacham. Zach Call fighting really hard to front that post in Lemke. Roberts drove, lost it out of bounds. The reason being a foul on Cy Meacham. Yep, that's that reach around slap. A lot of refs will let that, let that go. I used to play with a buddy of mine. He was a master at the reach around slap. And he's, he said he never fouled anybody on that, but <laughs> your elbow was sore by the end of the night. It's, that's, that's a foul every time. Uh, and it's such a tough – if you've ever had that happen to you as the ball handler. You feel you guilty calling. Uh, yeah, yeah, you feel – it always seems like such a smart move, but every so often it is a foul like we saw there on Meacham. Dixie trailing on their home floor by two. 32-34, six minutes, 35 seconds on the Nets on fire clock as Carter has it on the right side. He waits for something to set up. Barbin tries to pop and will do so. You know, without Simmons, they need to go into Lim Limke, uh, and they finally do, and it's a bad pass. And that was the right look, bad pass. Zach Call tips it, steals it, and now Will Warner dribbles with the right hand up against Roberts. To Anderson Foreman at the top, over to Owen Mackey. Mackey with a little bit of a fake. Step back for just a moment before giving it up to Zach Call. Like you said, no Simmons, no hammer on the floor right now for the Warriors. It's going to be the Owen Mackey show more likely than not as Mackey controls, was waiting for the Anderson Foreman screen. Instead, they'll reset the offense. And Coach Meacham content to have his two big scorers on the bench right now. He's making no move at this point. This lineup right now is very hustle-oriented. A lot of guys who make... All the plays happen in the small areas. Warner trying to go off a call screen, and Zach Call, call. I think he dropped that shoulder a yep. little. Yep, All he had to do was stand there. He didn't have to lean. I know, you know, so Canyon gets called for those illegal screens. I remember Coach Judkins, used to coach Snow College, now coaches Dixie State. Uh, he used to get mad at his guys if they didn't get called for one or two illegal screens a game, but uh, that one was too obvious. And with that, it's going to be Dixie basketball. They trail. Over in the corner, Dyer open look from three. He's got one earlier, that one no good. Big rebound from Barbin, and as he spins to try to get to the rim, he's tied up. Yeah, he brought the ball down where the little guys can reach it. You got to keep that up high in the cupboards where your wife won't know where the girls got cookies are, right? <laughs> you got to keep it way up there. Keep it high, and typically you're fine, but you bring up a good point. Definitely drop that lower than uh, Coach Roberts would have wanted, and the result is Snow Canyon basketball. And there's no no truth to the rumor that I hide Girl Scout cookies really high so my wife can't get them. Uh, that that the is completely are. not true. <clears throat> we know where the cookies are in Andy Griffin's house. Quiet, quiet now. Hopefully your wife's not listening. Meacham over to Owen Mackey. They're going to go back to the big. Lyman Simmons back in the game, runs over Webb, and it's not an offensive. It's not a block. It's a travel on Lyman Simmons. You know, there's a trend in college and pro basketball to stop the flop. That was a flop by Kean Webb. He went back with such violence that he barely got tapped by Simmons. I think it's a good call. It was a travel. It was not an offensive foul. Good restraint by the official, although he could have called a flop. So with that, no foul but a turnover. Dixie with the ball. Webb swings it over to Dyer. Dyer faked right. He ends up going left. Tried to get inside the Lemke. That ball batted around. Back to Dyer on the right side. This swing pass is going to be stolen by Cy Meacham. He doesn't have numbers, so he'll try to slow things up. And as he spins back, he's bumped by Roberts. Yeah, coach's son fouls coach's son. The all hustle guys, neither one is very big, really. But those guys yeah. are out there. Uh, you know, you can tell they've been raised in a household that eats, sleeps, drinks, and breathes basketball. And really, for both of them, they're both solid three-point shooters, great assist men. Lyman Simmons got Webb to jump on the three attempt. Beautiful pass inside to Anderson Foreman. And uh, the ball never quite made it there, deflected. Yeah. We you know, Simmons wanted to shoot that three. Good pump fake. Webb came out. I think he should have gone all the way to the hoop and thrown it down. That would have sent a message. Flyers defense, solid job of collapsing back inside. Warner gets it off the inbound over to Meacham. Meacham acted for a minute like he might shoot. Warner off a fake, gets inside against Roberts. Had a small advantage, didn't take it. Back in the corner, open look at three. Team D triple, Will Warner. Biggest shot of the game, and it's a five-point SC lead. Dixie now needs a bucket in the worst way. And timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. We'll see if we got a full or a 30. 
30. That's going to be a 30. 30 second timeout, 32 37. Warriors with their biggest lead of the night. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Well, AG, listening to the calls between Dixie student section and Snow Canyon student section, I think it's fair to assume that they both have spirit. <laughs> and, uh, Are you sure? Yeah, I think they do. Are you sure? <laughs> great, great battle, not only on the floor, but between these two student sections is Barvin. Hasn't scored yet, thought about driving right. He'll give it back to Webb. It's four minutes left. Dixie has to score. They've been in a little bit of a drought. Lemke inside, thought about the cutting Barvin and said he's going to try to work in the post against Simmons. Gets that right hand, push shot off, won't go. Anderson Foreman clears. Good defense. Simmons just stayed in front, waited for him to jump hook yeah. and contested. And Simmons really doesn't want to contest. Three fouls already. Simmons with a pump fake. He's got Webb off his feet a couple times. Webb able to recover due to the help as and Will Warner has it up top. And by the way, still no bow and hammer. He has sat the entire fourth quarter and about half of the third. When are we going to see number five? And, and for Hammer right now, it's been it's been an interesting night for him. Travel, good call. Simmons travels inside, like you mentioned. And, and for for Bowen Hammer right now, you don't 100% know what the what the situation is. He, he wasn't in foul trouble, right? Nope, no foul trouble. Yeah, uh, just was kind of off tonight. And you know, if, if I have a guy that can score as good as him, I let him shoot through a slump. But Coach Meacham keeping Bowen Hammer on the bench, your leading scorer. Back out, Grant Carter, three, no good, too strong. Meacham the board, and he's bumped by Carter, who's trying to chase his own rebound, chase his own shot. I, I will say this, you know, with Hammer, uh, you know, he could sit over there and sulk, or he can be a good teammate and cheer. And uh, I'm looking over there, he he was cheering. He, you know, he doesn't appear injured. He's not in foul trouble. He's sitting there, he's the first guy on the bench, right next to the coaches. And with three minutes, five seconds left, his team enjoys a five-point lead and the basketball, 32-37, 37-32 in favor of the Warriors. Will Warner, Snow Canyon can't imagine they're in too much of a hurry right now. Swings out to Anderson Foreman, back to Lyman Simmons. Simmons, a little shimmy move, ends up taking a couple dribbles left and dumping it back to Warner. They get the call from Coach Meacham, and they'll break into a new offensive set. Simmons rolling the high post right now. We'll get the ball as he pops above the three-point line. Mackey back inside. Simmons left alone. Oh. Lyman Simmons with oh. the throw down on Lemke. Oh, mama. He didn't just dunk it. He dunked it over somebody. He created a poster some 10-year-old's going to have in his bedroom. Wow. Lemke came up to contest, and Simmons says it doesn't matter. I'm throwing it down. Dixie now in survival mode. 32-39. They need something fast. Grant Carter. Left hand dribble, he's guarded well by Mackey, had to pick it up and give it to Webb. Barbin now swinging around looking for his first points and he'll get it with the right hand lay in as he drives in. Ah, oh, that was easy money. Good job by Barbin to recognize that everybody was pinned down low, the right side, the lane was open, drove all the way to the hoop and scored. It's a five point game with 2.04 left. We got a timeout on the floor. It is a full, we'll take one with him. One minute timeout. We'll be back with the last minutes of the fourth. Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder. Space to connect. Space to imagine. Space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. Asphalt. 
It's not something we think about much, except when it's in bad shape. At Holbrook Asphalt, we help cities, HOAs, and businesses avoid replacing painfully expensive roads and parking lots. To avoid the cost of replacing asphalt, you must effectively preserve it while it's still in good condition. University research has shown Holbrook Asphalt's HA5 slows asphalt aging by 67%. We make your pavement assets last longer, cost less to own, all while achieving higher property values. Visit HolbrookAsphalt.com to discover more. Bronson Bar just scored the first points of the fourth quarter for the Dixie Flyers, and that's with two minutes, four seconds left here in the fourth. Flyers need to D it up as Warner breaks the press, gets all the way to the rim, throws one too strong off the backboard. Flyers have a chance. Dyer throws it away. Will Warner comes back for the steal, and Snow Canyon gets that blown layup right back. Yeah, with 145 left, Dixie's got to start thinking about fouling now. Maybe you play defense for about 30 seconds, then he start fouling. And Mackey, a strong drive inside. He took Dyer head on, and <laughs> great show of sportsmanship there as Dyer came over and said, yeah, you got me. Uh, Dyer went high to block that shot, and Mackey, he hit the basketball. He's like Houdini, uh, you know, the, the Chris Angel hiding that ball, and then at the last second he says, oh, here it is. And by that point, Dyer had fouled him pretty hard. Peekaboo. At the fabulous Freddy's free throw line, Owen Mackey gets it to go. Take a moment right here. Thank Red Rock Real Estate. Get your free market analysis on what your home could sell for. Check out redrockrealestate.com. Bringing your rebounds all year long. Second free throw is out, and there's a Red Rock Real Estate rebound courtesy of Lemke. Mackey, one of two. Six-point game. That's two possessions. That means if they can find a way to hit a three here, they're right in it. Roberts had to pick it up, give it to Grant Carter. Flyers need to score quick. Carter inside left hand, tried to draw contact. Lemke with a big man's rebound. Back out to Dyer, Dyer contested three. Boom. That drops as he puts his hand to the sky. Big hit and a much needed hit for Cam Dyer. Now think about Dyer and, and the position he puts, puts Coach Roberts in. He is so athletic, he's such a great shooter. He's so energetic. But, you know, he had like three or four turnovers in this quarter. It's like, man, I want to play this kid all the time. But sometimes, but I'll tell you what, no shot was bigger in this game than that one right there. 117 left. They pulled within three. Dyer needed that to go down. Now sits at 14 on the night. As we look at this, uh, it's a full timeout. Timeouts this year brought to you by Scott Gibson at Intercap Lending. Yeah, they don't mask their rates or fees. See how much the Scott Gibson team can save you today. Call or text 435-619-8080. That's 619-8080. We also appreciate Sports Clips A. It's good to be a guy. Walk-ins are always welcome. Ask for the MVP treatment at two Southern Utah Sports Clips. It's good to be a guy, especially when the score is 40 to 37 with 117 left. Rustin. And for Dyer, that's 14 points. Wow. If you would have said coming in this game, you have no Risco Brooks, he's not playing, that's 18 points, typically scored, take those away, and you only scored five points in the fourth quarter against 14-0 Snow Canyon, albeit on your home floor, and you were only down three, you'd imagine that they might take those odds right now. It's been a slugfest of a game, and Dixie's still giving themselves a chance. With a minute 17, Warriors with the ball, they lead 40-37. Be interesting to see as Dixie's going to try to apply some pressure. Snow yep. Canyon. A little 2-1-2 little two -two press, but they don't have to foul yet. And they're able to get it across half court to Owen Mackey. Warner gave it to Mackey as he kind of sealed himself at about the midcourt line. Meacham now with it is going to be fouled on that little reach around from Barbin. And back to the strike we go. One and one. Got the coach's son. You assume he's going to be a good free throw shooter. Uh, we don't know. I don't, maybe you have some numbers. I don't imagine he shot too many this year. Yeah, he's four of seven, which is 57%. That's not good. Four but of if he seven. makes these two, he'll be six of nine, and that's 67%. Hey, you'll take those odds any day. <laughs> Let's see what Cy Meacham can do, finding himself on the floor in crunch time. Yep. First one up and down. Still no bow and hammer. I don't know if he, he doesn't look hurt, folks. Uh, he's, he's actually moved all the way to the end of the bench now, right, right by the scorer's you know, checking table, but he's not checking in. And we've got 58 seconds left. Hammers hit a couple threes tonight, but you're right. He hasn't been able to make his usual impact as Meacham. Two clutch free throws for the young guard. And now Dixie's got to be back on the attack. Under a minute, 54 seconds. Robert stops and pops for three. Thought he had contact from the back. Instead, it ends up in the hands of Anderson Foreman, who's immediately 
wrapped up by Dyer and Barman, and a foul on one of those two. Well, we've been talking about the athleticism of guys like Dyer and Webb and, and Lemke and Hammer, but how about that Foreman Anderson, Anderson Foreman guy? That was a great rebound. He skied in the air. He was higher than may, maybe I've ever been to get that rebound, and then he brought it down and got slapped at, but that was a heck of a rebound. And Anderson Foreman has really carved out a role on this Warrior team as we're still in the bonus situation. He went from one of the guys off the bench to provide some energy and rebounding to a pivotal starter. First free throw is down. Leaves that hand hanging in the air for just a little bit. Now the lead is six. This is a big one. This is the three possession one. If he hits this, you can't catch up with two threes. You may, it's a seven point game. So a huge free throw right here might be the game clincher if he can hit it. Crowd loud on the Dixie side. Oh. Doesn't matter. It's oh. okay. And the, the rebound went off of Barbin's hand right to no uh, to Lyman Simmons. And Simmons will go to the line now, and he's got a chance to clinch it, it with now two free throws. And if you're Dixie, talk about some pretty rotten luck right that there. Was, huh? That was killer. Yeah, it went yeah. right off of Barbin's hands. And I don't I don't know. I, I don't think it was due to, to – someone being in the wrong position on the box out. I just think it was how the bounce went. Yeah, it just came a little hard. That's the best basketball for you. By the way, Barbin just fouled out. That's five on him. Simmons, though, now with two shots. He makes either one of them. It's a seven-point spread. Simmons has really upped his game from the stripe this year as the first one is good for Snow Canyon. He's turned himself into a near 80% free throw shooter. Timeout full on the floor. And uh, we'll take it with them. Scott Gibson, air cap lending timeout. Flyers trying to stay alive. Snow Canyon putting the final nails in the coffin. One minute break, 37-44, Warriors. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. Back at it here at the hangar, Dixie High School as the home team finds themselves trailing 44-37. They led most of the game, first, second, third quarter even, and uh, fourth, it's been all Snow Canyon as Lyman Simmons, one more free throw. Looks like Hurricane is up five with under a minute to go at Desert Hills. That would be a huge road win for Coach Langston and the Tigers. Thunder trying to fight there, just like the Flyers trying to fight here. Simmons, another free throw wow, down the pipe. Eight-point game now, Rustin. And that means the shots are going to have to come quick as Roberts tries to break down Meacham. Goes to the left, back to the right. He'll try to get inside, lay up over Simmons. Won't go. Webb rebound. He goes back up strong and draws enough contact to visit the stripe himself. Smart thing. Go to the hoop, draw a foul, get to the line, see if you can... You know, see if, see if you can extend this game because uh, with the clock stopped, you got a chance to score some points. Yeah. And then you've got to really put the press on if they get it past half court, foul immediately. And Webb has been pretty solid from the line this Ooh. year. I got to stop talking. He was 2-2 two two up to that point. That you, one's going to roll around and out. You cannot afford to give points away from the line. And look who just checked into the game after sitting for seven and a half minutes of the fourth quarter. Bowen Hammer is in probably for rebounding and free throw shooting. And two of four is now the total for Webb in the ballgame. He misses two straight when Dixie needs points most. Mackey, he's going to be surrounded by a couple Flyer guards, able to swing it to Warner. Clock continues to tick, and the Flyers are just running out of time. Doesn't look like they're trying to yeah, foul, no, no foul anymore. Eight-point game with 20 seconds. You just let it go out. 15-0 in, in the sights of Snow Canyon fans and this team. If you look over on the sideline, the bench is celebrating. Simmons takes a couple dribbles as the clock's down to five, four, three, two, and one. Snow Canyon undefeated, a big region victory here in the hangar, a place where region teams don't get to win a whole awful lot. The Warriors do it tonight, 45 to 40.
Yeah, the, the, the ball actually came loose, and Dixie hit a three at the buzzer. It did count, but it didn't matter. 45-40, the victory for the Canyon Warriors today. I think we're going to have a hard time getting our Holbrook Athol big score dessert from any of our games. A lot of low-scoring games tonight, but congratulations. Can you believe Snow Canyon? They've taken the court 15 times this year. No matter where it was, they've emerged with a victory. And I really think that these games against Desert Hills, although Snow Canyon you know, put up 53, I think these games against defensive-minded teams have paid major dividends for them because they ran into a defensive slugfest here tonight and they ended up coming away just fine despite trailing for most of it. Big win, Snow Canyon 45, Dixie 40. We'll take a two minute break and be back with our Johnson Pediatrics post game show. Hand out a couple awards as AG just previewed. Two minute break. Dear chairlift, let's try this my way. With available four wheel drive, it takes me straight to the top in style and a wild side that's always ready for whatever's next. Still want to take the scenic route? Sure thing. Keep it wild, Forerunner. Toyota, let's go places. Back at the hangar, it's the Johnson Pediatrics Post Game Show. Dr. Cody Johnson and his staff make your kids feel right at home. See why so many are choosing Johnson Pediatrics. Call 628-0511. Ask for the new patient special there with Dr. Cody Johnson. They are fantastic. And uh, on the note of fantastic, what a game we were treated to tonight. Snow Canyon will escape 45-40 with the win. And... Uh, Man, what's your final thoughts? Well, you know, for about two and a half quarters, I thought, okay, this is what we're used to. Dixie dominating at home, using a really great matchup zone, great defense. They're going to come away. They're going to be the team that is in first place in Region 9. And then something happened in the middle of the third quarter. Flyers stopped scoring. The defense of Snow Canyon was fantastic. Flyers stopped scoring, and Snow Canyon kept scoring. And all of a sudden, it went from, uh, you know, a, a three to five point lead for the Flyers to a three to five point lead. For the Warriors, they then extended that out. I think it was up to eight or nine in the fourth quarter. Warriors come away with the win. Congratulations. I think, you know, the, the uh, story is not told, Rustin. Yeah. We, we're about halfway through. The, well, not even halfway. We're about a third of the way through the story that's going to be told in Region 9 this year. But Snow Canyon making a big statement tonight by winning at Dixie. This is a huge road win for, for the Warriors. You and I were talking about player of the game. It's weird. Snow Canyon had a different guy step up at different points in the game. Even Bowen, you know, even Bowen Hammer, who had a bad game, hit a big three at the end of the half yeah. to cut it to cut it to three. And and so, you know, each guy did their thing. Hammer probably a disappointing game for him. Sat most of the fourth quarter. 
But you know what? Snokanya got the win. He's got to be happy about that. Warriors get it done. They are now 15-0 and undefeated. 15-0. and wow. I don't think that number one RPI spot's leaving anytime soon nope. out there in the Santa Clara region. Good job from the Warriors. And uh, when we look at these final statistics before we get into some awards, the winning team, 45 points total. Bowen Hammer with six. Will Warner had a triple of his own. Anderson Foreman finished with three. Owen Mackey, 13. Zach Call, two. And your scorer of the entire ball game, Lyman Simmons, 18 points from the Warrior Big, despite sitting most of the first quarter with foul trouble. Yeah, let's, and let's go ahead and hand out that award, the Ernie's 2 Sinclair Player of the Game, uh, brought to you again by Ernie's 2 Sinclair. Uh, Ernie's is located in, you know what, they've got locations in St. George, Hurricane, Cedar, and Beaver. All of them have those original and wonderful chicken strips. Have you ever had those? You need to go I get have. Some. No, yeah. I, I went there specifically for those. I've been doing the radio for a little bit, and every time they say best chicken strips in the world, you always think, <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Let, maybe that's being too generous. It's, it's really not the case. They are fantastic. Ernie's 2 has you covered, and again, they present your player of the game. Player of the game, Lyman Simmons had a great second half. Really, that's why we picked him. Other guys had, for instance, Mackey had a great first quarter. Hammer hit some big shots, but uh, it was Simmons who really came to to the to the front uh, in the in the fourth in the third and fourth quarter and helped Snow Canyon win this game. And uh, we're going to name a, I think one for each team. We'll talk about Dixie's in just a second. Yeah, let's get to the to the Flyers. They really controlled the pace most of the game. And like you mentioned, the transition was somewhat of a, a slow one, right? It wasn't as if all of a sudden the Warriors just caught fire and they pulled away. It was the type of game where everything just kind of happened in its own due time, and yeah. Snow Canyon kept chipping, kept chipping, kept chipping until they pulled ahead. And for Dixie, without their star in Risco Brooks, they just didn't have enough tonight. They put up 40. Uh, Roberts finished the night with four. Cam Dyer, 14 points. Major performance from off him. Off the bench, yep. Off the bench, and that's the key part. So he finishes with Dixie's team high off the bench. Uh, Lemke with eight. You had Bronson Barber and foul out. He only finished with two was one of the main guys who scored in the fourth quarter in what was a rough fourth quarter for Dixie. And uh, Grant Carter, seven points. Key and Webb, two points tonight for the Dixie Flyers. And I, I really think we were talking about it during break, but Cam Dyer's energy tonight without Brooks, it seemed to make a big difference in keeping Dixie not only leading but competitive in the end. Well, and, and, you know, we don't want to canonize him, make him a saint. He was perfect tonight. Cam Dyer had a lot of turn. I mean, I'll bet he had four or five turnovers in this game. But the energy that he came into the game with, uh, the block shots that he had in this game, the you know, the, the three-point shots that he made, he brought something that Dixie really needed with Brooks out. He brought kind of that that leadership, that oomph that, that, uh, that, that Dixie was lacking. And for when they were ahead, it was because of Cam Dyer. He ended up losing that game. He missed. Him. He had a big three late, but he ended up losing the game. But Dyer, I think, was huge, and he is definitely our Ernie's two player of the game for the Dixie side. I agree on that. And in a game that was full of so much energy and excitement, I'm really excited to see what we do for the Appliance Wholesalers Plus Playmaker Play of the Game. It's the top play of the night brought to you by our friends at Appliance Wholesalers Plus across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart. Go check them out for GE and Samsung Appliances. They are local, and they've been serving the community for a handful of years. I think you got to play in mine, Andy. Yeah, I do. And, you know, and I wish the replay machine, our replay machine is broken tonight. I wish uh, the, our guys at CEC do such a fantastic job. Great job. I wish we could show this play again. But it was a big-time two-handed dunk that uh, Lyman Simmons had over Noah, not Noah, Kyle Lemke, that was a big time throwdown with a guy in his face. I think the ball might have hit uh, Lemke in the top of the head. There was posters being made, you know, flash bulbs going <laughs> off. It was amazing. It was an incredible dunk, and it was easily our AWP playmaker play of the game. Hey, it's easier than you think to find the, the great uh, appliances like GE and Samsung at AWP across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart. Again, play of the game, big dunk by Lyman Simmons. Lyman Simmons play of the game as he put it down on the head of Lemke and a great night for him. 18 points for the Snow Canyon big man. Despite foul trouble, his team gets the victory 45-40. And to kind of wrap things up here, 
Uh, we do want to thank Morgan Pest Control this year and their whole $60 for schools program. Back to celebrate 60 years for every region win. Each school gets 60 bucks, and when you call Morgan Pest Control, your first four sprays are just $60 themselves. 673-9172. And also Holbrook Asphalt. When your team scores 55 points or more, head to Yogurtland. That didn't happen here tonight, but as we look at the other region scores and finals there, did, did Hurricane get to 55? I almost believe Hurricane got to 55. Yeah, I'm still trying to find a final on that one. I know at right now Dixie State is winning. They've got a five-point lead over Cal Baptist right now in the in the first half of that game. We're hoping the Jazz can pull a miracle out. They keep having guys thrown out of the game, and, of course, they got COVID issues and, and all kinds of stuff. So I haven't seen a final yet on the Hurricane game. I know that Pineview actually has made a comeback against uh, against uh, Crimson Cliffs. Pineview is within three at the end of the third quarter against Crimson. So, uh I thought that was a blowout. I thought Crimson was going to run away from Pineview. Panthers hung in there. They really did, and we'll, we'll keep you updated on the final there. Those games on Sports Radio 977.com, Utah Sports TV. And last we saw, Hurricane was up five with under a minute to go in that game in the Thunderdome. We don't know the final, but Hurricane was up, and odds were looking good for I think the it Tigers. Was the, I think it was in the 30s. I don't think we were going to make it to. You're right. I think I, it was 38-33. We oh, and the Jazz are down 20 in the middle of the third. Thanks, Ken, for the update. Uh, it's not a pretty one, though. I, I, I didn't expect it to be. I could hope, but I didn't expect it to be against the Cavaliers, one of the tallest teams in the NBA. You really need Rudy Go you do. Gobert in that game. He seems, he seems like a necessity night in, night out, but especially against a team as long as Cleveland. And lastly, we just want to give you your look ahead to what you're looking at Friday. Two days from now, we'll have all the Region 10 action um, that day as well on ESPN 97.7. Dixie on the road against the Mustangs, who Andy Griffin tabbed him as That's one of the underrated game. teams. Yeah, especially without Brooks in the lineup. Dixie's got their work cut out for him because Crimson is a good team. Crimson is a really solid team, and assuming they take care of Pineview, assuming they would jump to 9-3 and three on the year, that one yet to get a final on. Pineview, Snow Canyon, me and Andy Griffin, we should have that for you on KDXU 92.5. Get 94.9 out of your vocabulary. That's right. And Desert Hills at Cedar will be the other one Friday night. Any closing thoughts before we get everyone on their way at CEC TV and KDXU 92.5? Well, I have to ask you, how long do you, did they say how long Brooks was going to be out? Because I think that is a big factor in where Dixie goes from here. Per, per Devin, what I've heard specifically, or at least what he texted me, was anywhere from three to six weeks, and it's always oh, tough to if tell. It's, if it's six, that might be the whole season. Yeah, so. it's. I think they're taking it kind of a, a very cautious approach, as they should. It sounded like the fracture was almost in two different spots, oh, and boy. if he was to take another hit, it could cause some pretty serious uh, uh, side effects. I don't want to speculate on those, but, yes, it's – it seems like he can be out. Brooks can be out for a good chunk of time. And this Flyers team, who's always played well as a squad, they're going to have to do so more than next, ever before. Next man up. That's what it's going to be. Next man up. Uh, and that will do it from the hangar. It's the Flyers, the Warriors. Snow Canyon gets it done in a place where other teams don't often come into and steal a victory. The Warriors do it tonight, 45-40. Did get one other final before oh, we go. Perfect. Hershey's Hardware final. Crimson beats Pineview 56 to 47. So the Mustangs will go into Friday night's game against Dixie undefeated in region play. And for Crimson Cliffs, that's 9 and 3 on the year, 3 and 0 oh in region. That should put them above the Flyers now, who are 11 and 3, 2 and 1 in region, yep. setting up a, a fun matchup there. Pineview will fall to 6 and 6 on the year, 1 and 2 in region play. For Rustin Burnside, Andy Griffin from The Hangar, thanks for CEC TV and the great production they have every single time we're with them. And Ken back in the studio at KDXU 92.5 for getting us out there. Thanks for listening and uh, supporting us on a week-to-week -week basis. Have a good night, everybody.